Kante, Leather Shoes from Joan, uh, Janet Fisher's, Janet Fishgrim's bumps does probably fit. I remember Jan wearing those. So, sorry, Ameline wears hard, hand-painted thorn latex top from The Hunger, spring of 95, because of Janet Fishgrim. Oh, Janet had Bum- that top. She had a top, not the bumpsters, I'm sorry. Bumpsters, she did trousers, have bumpsters. Dante, autumn winter 96. I wonder if those, those trousers are catered anyway, bumpsters. Mm. You talk about bumpsters. Um, I mean, photographically, there's just... <laughs> Well, they're a very, just a very erotic piece of clothing to, to yeah. photograph because they show something that other pieces of clothing don't. Yeah. And uh, I only paused because I'm slightly cautious about putting too much of my own slant on it. But it's one of the most erotic zones of the body because it's the moment before you get down to the sex. Yeah. So it's yeah. the moment before you... Well, that's what Lee thought. Yeah. So man or woman, it's that. And yeah. in a way, the anticipation is so important in sexuality. Is, is the most important thing, isn't it? So that's, for me, where the bumpsters are, front to back, <laughs> man, woman. Lee was interested in the small of the back, right. the bottom of the back. Yeah. But obviously from the front, they're amazing too. And actually, we, you know, how amazing to make that cut in a way that it stays up. And I noticed she's got her leg out, so maybe it wasn't staying up so well. But the no, thing about fine. the bumpsters yeah. were they did stay up yeah and technically that's incredibly difficult to do and technically lee will have been able to do that because he was obviously incredibly gifted but also because of his several row training Mm. because engineering that shape and making it sit the way it sat and stay there is something else i think that was probably very difficult um the picture really is a sort of you know part of the reason to uh, talk about i guess to talk about his love of wildlife Birds. And birds. Mm. Um, we've put the sort of mass of crows, but I mean, where the. I mean, it's sort of obvious, really, but it stems from it, you know, most children's love of nature. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, the sort of. He said himself, he was laughing when he said it, that it was like Kez, his upbringing, yeah, and then he used yeah. to go to the tower block next door and watch birds fly. And Simon Unglis, who was his friend, I think Sean and Simon and Lee lived together. Right. Really early on. I think that's right. I didn't, Sean would obviously know. Um, but Simon also loved birds. He came from the countryside, but from a working right. class background. But he used to right. bring pe- um, pheasant feathers yeah. home from his parents' house. But Lee was a bird watcher. He was a member of the Young Ornithologist Society of Great Britain. <laughs> and, you know, Simon had all those little observer books of birds. Yeah. I've got them too, actually. Yeah, they're fantastic. Have... Yeah. Oh, well, Charlotte's absolutely, my wife's absolutely. They're lovely. Young Ornithologist of the Year. Yeah, yeah I've absolutely, yeah. yeah whatever it is. Well, there you go. But Lee was too, and it was a kind of, there was a, you know, there was a brutality to Lee's yeah. childhood, clearly. Um, and I think, you know, the, the fact that birds fly and the fact mm. that birds are so beautiful and the fact, you know, that it moved him and moved him all the way through. There's also a real honest savagery in um, nature. Yeah. Which is, I think he's, because I remember one of the references he would come up with again and again when we were talking about pictures, was that, you know, the, the, the 101 different examples of it, but a famous bit of footage of the big cat, the cheetah or the lion or whatever it is, mm. pursuing the poor little antelope. Thompson's gazelle. Thompson's gazelle yeah. across the plains. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, and how that was such an inspiring thing for him because of the beauty and also the brutality in it. Yeah. You know, it was actually the sort of... Which if you've had quite a brutal time, yeah. there is no better way, well, I guess there's no more cathartic way to look at it than to see the potential for beauty in that. Yeah. It's a way of dealing with it, isn't it, maybe? Well, I mean, that's a bit called psychology, but I've just, just come, that is a way of dealing with it. Yeah. Life is really brutal, and but there's beauty in that. Yeah. Well, we we have the humans to kind of endlessly you know, diagnose and rationalise and think about and um, try and work out why. But if you look at the, the uh, example of the the pursuit across to death across the sort of plains, yeah. you know, there's absolute functionality in that. It goes back to the modernism. There's no romance in that. No food we chain. Put, yeah, exactly. He said that actually. Yeah. He said that well, about Thompson's gazelle. He just said it's part of the food chain. Poor yeah. little, poor little critter doesn't get to live for long. Part of the food chain. Yeah, but the, the and he was, but he, you know, he did a whole show about Thompson's gazelle, and so clearly that kind of fragility yeah. 
was something that he was moved by. Yeah, which show was about? Tom That's it's a jungle out there that had the Thompsons Gazelle makeup. Oh, okay, remember so with the burning cars? Yes, yeah, so that's the one I did the imitation for with Deborah they, Shaw. They, that's it. Okay, with the Thompson Gazelle horns. Okay, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. I think the idea behind that image was that she, you know, had either just eaten the Thompsons Gazelle. <laughs> She was becoming one. I couldn't quite work out where it was going. Well, it? that, but I think that with Lee was ongoing. You couldn't work out victim, predator, victim, predator. Yeah. The, you know, there was a tension between both. Yeah. Depending on how you looked at it, actually, which is probably why one person can look at something and think, wow, that's so empowering. And another person can look at it and think, how could they do that to that person? Yeah, well, that's, that's the image I was talking about earlier. Yeah. I was saying, well, I got a lot of. So we've gone I full circle, yeah. Collective sort of. Um, um, criticism that it was misogynistic. It was kind of thinking, this is an image about a cheetah and a yeah. gazelle. I'm sorry. And but Lee was interested in both. Yeah. The victim and the predator, definitely. Yeah. And maybe, you know, in expressing those in one image, and maybe you are too, you are. Hmm. No? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. If I was writing about you, I'd say that. <laughs> um, it's, I mean, this image also pulls very heavily on Hitchcock's The Birds. Yeah. Um, and that was again a reference that came back through throughout. Yeah. I mean, you're so correct in saying you know the, the references are there from all the first couple of shows, and they keep on going on. I know. Which Obsessed is, with the same things, and actually, you know, the Tippy Hedron character in the birds, you know, manipulative, mm -hmm. uptight, mm -hmm. you know, domineering in a way, controlling, yeah. in a way, but so vulnerable. Yeah. That it's the same thing. Yeah teetering around in the kind of little skirt and I think Lee was obsessed with that and the kind of veneer of power and holding it together protecting a core of extreme vulnerability I mean with her you could just that whole film you can just feel it's going to go off and she is going to go off yeah. at any minute yeah yeah and then she does yeah I mean that's a, a, a lot of um, you know, a lot of it has such resonance within yeah. Lee's work we'll move to the next picture